Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots. I am going to be answering a reader question about the array tools. There are three of them, so let's talk about it. To be on the same page, I am using Xtool Creative Space version 2.6.38. I'm going to start here on a new project. As always, the tool you are using over here does not matter, and you do not have to be connected to a device in order to design. So let's get started. First, I'm just going to add a rectangle or square by hitting R and holding down the shift to get a perfect square, a perfect circle. And then I'll do line holding shift to get a straight line. Those are what we're going to be working with, as well as I'm going to show you how images work as well. Inside of the applications menu at the left, you have three array tools. I already have a video on the material test array and I urge you to watch it if you are new to XCS or to lasers because this has saved us so much time and energy. We're however going to be talking about grid arrays and circular arrays. So the first one, let's talk about the grid. What we want to do is take a, a shape or an image and start there. You do not, unlike a materials test, have to indicate which of these you want this to be. We can change these at any time. So all you're going to do is select an object, select grid array. Now inside the grid array, you can see right now, this is giving us two columns worth of our object and two rows worth of our object. It also can be changed with regard to spacing. Now, if you are like, hey, I have a jig like that, that's exactly what I use this for. Probably 90% of the time I'm making jigs with that tool right there. You can make a pencil jig. You can make a, I just made a passport holder grid. Um, Keychains is another one. Super simple. You can make a grid. To, what, to make a grid, you would make this whatever real size you want. You would cut these shapes out and you would glue it to a shape that is solid behind it so you have an idea where to put things. You actually don't even have to glue it to the solid shape behind it. I don't have the time. But that's an easy jig. And you can do it with the circle as well. It does not matter, oops, it does not matter. If we do the grid array, do pay attention to your spacing, especially if you're making a grid. It's always a good idea as well to make a positioning point on your grid so you can just put an absolute position for those of us using the um, pinpoint positioning. If you are using the Xtool P2 or another one with a camera, you can actually just position on a particular dot. I personally like to position via the crosshair, so I make that shape. So that's it. Now, the line is very cool, as is a rectangle. I'm going to show you this. If I select my line, select grid array, let's do pretty significant spacing here. There we go, maybe there. And hit done. Again, we've just duplicated the line four columns over and four column or four rows down. So we hit done. If I copy and paste that, this right here, set it to cut, I've just made a living hinge. So you can do this with any shape. I know a lot of people have asked about the Greek uh, key living hinge. You can absolutely do that. You can just put an image of Greek key in here. But here, my very first living hinge was rectangles. I'd say it looked more like that, probably. There you go. Set that whole thing to cut you're good. That right there is super simple and super easy and a great way to make a, a living hinge. So now let's say, can it be used with images? Absolutely. So let's see. I have, oh, here's one. So this is just something, I don't know what it is yet. Hold on. Ah, so this is just something I drew on my iPad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop this image as tightly so it can just work a little bit quicker on the editing. So there's it's cropped. And now I'm going to go into this thing called cutout. So you see how you can't see the grid behind there? That means it's an image. Also, it only says image over here. And in your layers panel, it says image. We've got a lot of ways we can tell it's an image. 
you can still use the array tools with images. Over Christmas, I made a sticker sheet uh, with a person's child's face, like really quick, really easy, M1 uh, Ultra for the win. Okay, so I'm just going to be taking away all of the white space in here. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm also going to use the erase feature uh, to get rid of this stem. Confirm. All right, so again, we're still working with an image. It could be a child's face. It could be a picture of your dog, anything. I'm going to make it a little smaller so that we can just keep it on the page here. Okay, so let's say I want to make a sticker sheet. I can come here to grid array. I want three columns, four rows, increase my spacing, and done. Now, right now, if I were on the M1 Ultra, I could print this, right? Pretend it's colorful and everything. But in order to get the outside vector cut, because remember, this is now just a group of images, right? But we would need the outside vector cut, so we can offset it. Okay, as you can see, this isn't checked. I wanna show you if it's not checked, what you're gonna get. So it's on the outside. If you don't check this outer shapes only, you get all these inner cuts and that's not what we want. We want only the outside and here it is. So now what you see is our original group of daisies or whatever this is. And then we have this compound vector. So this would be the indicator to the print then cut. This would be the cut. And then this all in here would be the print, okay? All right, I'm going to undo that. Actually, you know what we could do? Copy it and then undo it. So I get my just my piece back. There we go. I'll we'll group that. Okay. Now the other way you can use arrays is with the circular array. And I use this a lot. So I use the grid a lot for as you can see, stickers, living hinges, jigs, whatever, ornaments. I do ornaments that way. But the circular um, is really cool because you can actually create backgrounds. So for this design, I would say our background, let's leave it as a turn. Let's drop the number of copies. Let's say I'm making the back of a baby's nursery sign or I'm making um, little month um milestone makers for a little girl so let's say i want a variant of this little flower but i want to make a pattern so if i adjust let's say eight that's a little too much for you to see let's say four no okay a little more so depending on where we put it on the x and y uh grid on the axes we can make a pattern. So if I hit done, these are four individual images that I can engrave on the back of a piece. I can also put it back here and rotate. So now I have a little, I don't know, wreath or something that I could put. And I could put two months in here or six months in here. I could also trace all of these and then make it score, right? So any of your designs or your images, any vectors like these or any images can be used with the circular array tool. They can be used with the grid array tool. Like I said, I made stickers of someone's face, of <laughs> their child's face, um, using this exact tool. So three different arrays. This one is, you got to get really used to this one in laser cutting, but these two are perfect to help you design a lot more efficiently, uh, efficiently than normal. So I hope that you found that helpful. Let me know if you have any comments below, and I would love to hear from the experienced users in sharing how you use these array tools. As always, thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe for more.